Hey, whoever's watching, thanks for joining us. We're sorry you can't be here with us, but this is the best we can do in the circumstances. I hope you all enjoy. Welcome everyone. There's not a whole lot of people here, but we're glad for every person that we couldn't feel more supported, more loved. So thanks for everyone who came and everyone who's watching. Let's begin by prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your work on our behalf. Thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for guiding Monica and I each in our lives to this day. Pray that you would continue to guide us. Pray that you would be honored and glorified in everything we do here today. Thank you for the beautiful weather you gave us. 
Thank you for each person that's here. I pray that your kingdom would be built through this. And I pray all this in your name. Amen. Let's sing This Is The Day. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath It is good to be here in a beautiful place and a special occasion. Recent world events remind us that life is full of changes and uncertainty. The rescheduling and rearranging of what was planned for this wedding gives us a stark reminder that life does change and it does have unexpected surprises to us. So much of this is beyond our control. And that falls into the realm of God's part. And this is one of the life lessons that I have uh, felt very keenly over the last number of years, and this event is no exception to it. There's God's part to life, and there's man's part. The things beyond our control, we trust Him. And then there's the human part in which we're responsible to respond and live faithfully. Many stories in Scripture demonstrate that interaction between God's part and our part. Sometimes the supernatural element is apparent. Other times it's not immediately visible. I'm reminded of that song, I believe in God even when He is silent. And yet he is still there. God's part is still active. The human element, however, is frequently most apparent because our human experience is very tangible. So today's meditation is going to focus on those two parts. There's so much that could be said. But I'd like to bring it down and hopefully summarize a few thoughts in thinking about the context of marriage. There's God's part. And there's man's part. Before we go there, I'd like to set the stage by giving a few thoughts about time. We're living in time. Time is a created thing. It defines the scope of our existence. However, it has an end. It exists within the larger scope of eternity. Every person has a unique allotment of time which is unknown to them. The past cannot be changed. The present is a gift from God. And the future is, who knows? Only God knows. You know, you look at the past and what is it? It's a compilation of experiences and events. Uh, hopefully, it involves lots of warm memories, sometimes maybe regret. But the future is unlike the past in that it's yet to be determined. The past cannot be changed. What happened in the past five minutes cannot be undone. And in this case, it's on videotape and can be verified, everything that happened. The future, however, is like a blank slate. 
in which the way we live in the present impacts the future. The reason I start with time is because I'd like to go to a passage in Ecclesiastes in which Solomon reflected on the passing of time. Much of the book he portrays a very cynical and uh, mostly an empty perspective, hence the phrase, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. And he has this very hopeless uh, perspective that he gives, and that's particularly in, it, it begins that way in chapter 1, it carries on through. There are bright spots, we'll get to one of those, but I'd like to just summarize. Here's what Solomon was thinking in light of time and its passing. The, this, this is just a brief summary. What's the point of living? Generations come and go, the earth keeps spinning, the sun comes up and goes down, so it can hurry it to its rising again. The wind blows towards the south, then towards the north, and then it whirls about. The rivers run to the sea, but the sea never gets full. The water eventually just recirculates. What has existed in the past will exist again. What has been done in the past will be done again. There's truly nothing new in life. History, history is not well remembered now or in the future. And Solomon's words grip us when we look at life from that empty perspective, that it's all just meaningless. It's just a, a cycle of events that continues to go on. Fortunately, he does give us some words of wisdom that go beyond that empty perspective. And I'd like to use that as a springboard to think about God's part in marriage and in life. Ecclesiastes 3. Very familiar passage. I will be reading selected verses from the first portion of that. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And then he goes and lists all these different things, many of them opposites. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn, and a time to dance. And he goes on with that. I'd like to go to verse 11. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. And I see that today in the change of plans. God can take it and it can still be beautiful. It doesn't have to mean that just because life gets upset that our emotions get tweaked, that expectations are unmet, hopes are unmet. It doesn't take away all the beauty. And God does that in so many ways. He's not confined by time in the way that we are. He makes all things beautiful in His time. Our God is a redeeming God. His plan is to redeem all those who are willing to cooperate with His plan. He will redeem this world. He can take bad experiences of life and redeem them. One of the greatest miracles of all time, he takes vile sinners and makes them into a new creation, a reflection of his righteousness. He makes all things beautiful in his time. And that's God's part. We cannot happen, the, the thing, we can't control the things that happen to us. We control how we respond. We control what we intend to do. We control our commitments. And today is a, one of the greatest commitments that is made in life of a man and a woman committing their lives to each other till death do us part. So that brings us now to man's part. God orchestrates, God directs, God redeems. It's all in His category. We have to trust Him. But then there's things that we, as his children, do. I'd like to go to the classic scripture in Ephesians 5, the classic on marriage. You all are familiar with it. I will read some of it. But I want to start with three verses that I think are often overlooked when addressing this passage. It's the three verses immediately prior to the uh, passage that's normally gone to. And that's verses 17, 18, and 19. And I think this gives a foundation for 
the verses that follow. If we do three things that are described here, it completely changes what happens in the, the following passages that we're more familiar with. Ephesians 5, verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And there is the first thing. Understand God's will. These are three foundational things. That is the first of them. Understand God's will. Verse 18. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And there we have the second thing. People who are filled and controlled by the Spirit. So you have God's will. You have His Spirit controlling us. Then go to verse 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always. I think verse 19 is a descriptor of what some of that thanksgiving looks like. Uh, certainly can be more than thanksgiving, but it includes that. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Carl and Monica, I'd like to encourage you to remember those three things. Understand the will of the Lord. Be filled and led by the Spirit. And give thanks in everything. Because as you do those three things, the role of husband and wife becomes easier and more beautiful. And here we begin to see the connection. God has His part, the things He does, and the human part brings it together. And God makes all things beautiful when we employ His ways and follow His ways. So let's read the scriptures that are frequently referred to. I will give a few comments, although they will be brief. Beginning in verse 22 then, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. We will pause there. What we have is the idea of how a woman interacts with her husband from a position of respect and honor. The biblical term used is submission. That does not mean that the woman is less valuable. It does not mean she is a doormat to the man's every whim. In fact, if he's doing his part that we'll get to in a little bit, it's impossible for her, him to look at her that way. She's a valuable creation of God. And yet her job, her role, is to come under the authority of her husband. A few verses from 1 Peter 3, where he even gives more details to what this looks like. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they may also they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives while they behold your chaste conversation. And so he's describing a woman who comes and lives with her husband in such a way that she has a radiant testimony that has the possibility of changing him without badgering him, nagging him, and finding ways to manipulate the situation. No, it's out of her strong character and uh, character that's changed by the Spirit of God that enables her to live that way. So a wife in her proper place with a godly attitude is more influenced, is more influential for good than the outspoken wife that usurps the role of the husband. Stories told of that illustrates this principle. A godly woman was married to a drunkard husband. When they got married, she had not known the Lord. They were both unbelievers. And yet she served him very well. He was at a drunken bar. He was at a bar in a drunken state late one night. And his friends were giving him rats about his wife. And he was talking about how good she is and really buttering her up. And he said, in fact, I could take all of you home right now and ask her to cook us a meal. It was near midnight. And she would get up and she would cook us a nice evening meal. And they said, no, there's no way. He said, yeah, come on. 
So they went to the house, and sure enough, the wife was already in bed. And just like he said, he made an unreasonable request, and she got up and very kindly and graciously provided a meal for the drunken husband and all his friends. One of them approached her and said, how in the world can you do that for your husband and for us? And she said, when we got married, I was as much a sinner and unforgiven as he was. But since then, I have found the peace and love of Jesus, and I fear for his eternal state. And so I regard it as my duty to make his existence on earth as pleasant as possible while I have time. And it wasn't too long after that 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 husband came to know the Lord through the role of a godly woman. I will not take time today, but if you go back into Ephesians 5, you will find that the husband has a very key role in loving his wife and to present her in the same way Christ will present the church holy as a bride without spot or blemish. That description is given there, and we will come back, and I'd like for you to listen to the description given to husbands. But first, just note this. When wives follow God's plan, He makes all things beautiful in His time. Verse 25 of Ephesians 5. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. And you hear coming through there the picture of Man is a representation of Christ, loving the wife in the same way with some of the same characteristics that Christ loves the church. Husbands, love your wife. Carl, love Monica, just as Christ loved the church. In the same way, following his model, it was a self-sacrificial love in which he sanctifies and cleanses the church. We have the opportunity as husbands to do the same thing it says, with washing through the water of the Word. How often do we need a bath? Varies from person to person and culture to culture. But for sure, when you get dirty, you need a bath. And for many of us, that's frequently. And I think all the more so in the spiritual sense. How often do we need cleaned up by God's Word? Frequently, regularly. And two other phrases I'd point out here describing Christ's love for the church. He wants to present a glorious church to God the Father. That picture is the same for us as husbands. How do we present a glorious wife to the people around us? Well, we can't control the way our wives look. God created that. That's God's part. But what's man's part? When man's loving the wife the way he ought to, and the relationship is God-honoring, you can frequently tell that on the face of the wife. Her countenance and expression is beautiful. It's radiant. It's glorious. Love your wife like you love yourself. Self-love is so natural. We don't need any training in that. We're born with that uh, miserable characteristic of uh, thinking the world revolves around us and our parents and God spend most of our lives undoing that faulty thinking that no, we're not the center of the universe. The same is true in marriage. You know what? Two people coming together and caring about each other, loving each other, focusing on the needs of the other person. That's where you go beyond self-love and loving yourself more than others. That needs to be reversed. We live, love others more than ourselves, specifically husbands. So when husbands follow God's plan, 
what can happen. God makes all things beautiful in his way, in his time. So I'd like to wrap it up. Jimmy Evans said, The best marriage in the world is two servants in love. I hope that one sticks. Not just for Carl and Monica, but for all married people or all who will be married. The best marriage in the world is two servants in love. The worst marriage in the world is two masters in love. What does that look like? Caring for each other, frequent smiles at each other, gentle, connected touches, loving words, words of affirmation, acts of service. And you'll recognize some of those phrases is not original with me. Readiness to forgive and be forgiven. Quality time. Don't forget quantity. Uh, quality time is needful. So is quantity. So getting married and staying married is an opportunity. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. Time represents opportunity. When time ends, opportunities cease in the same way that we know it. Frequently, opportunities have limited time. We have opportunities in relationship, especially in marriage. Now, those of us present believe that marriage is for life. In that particular view, has ramifications like taking each other for granted. Oh, this is for life. He'll stick around. She'll put up with me. No, we don't want that thinking. Yes, it is for life, but in the context of a servant's heart of love. How about taking this view? I will spend the rest of my life with them let me do all I can to contribute to make it a good thing and a positive thing. I have an opportunity to love and serve my partner as Christ would love and serve. And this one I think I like the best. I have the privilege of walking my life partner to the gates of glory. You know, this life does have an end and we don't know when it ends. But we're on a journey. Marriages are in part defining who do I make that journey with. Today, Carl and Monica are saying, it's the other one I'm doing this with. And somewhere out there in the future, God has glory in eternity. And we have the opportunity to, co to cooperate with Him. There's no greater purpose in marriage than to encourage our spouse on the journey to forever and this concept, I think, adds new and deeper meaning to the phrase, till death do us part, or as long as we both shall live. It's not a place to be stuck. It's a place of wonderful opportunity. An opportunity to experience the best of both worlds, marital bliss and eternal joy. So Carl and Monica, this is a very special day. Go, live, love, and serve. He makes all things beautiful in his time. This time we're ready for the wedding ceremony. So if the bridal party, invite them to stand and Carl and Monica to come forward. Carl and Monica, this is a very special day for you all. It's been a joy 
to get to talk with you and to plan for with you for your wedding day. It's an honor to be here and to see you all make this commitment to each other. Do you all join hands? First, I have a question to both of you. Do you believe that marriage is an ordinance instituted by God and confirmed and sanctioned by the Lord Jesus Christ and that you must therefore enter into it in the fear of God? I do. I do. And now to you, Carl. Do you confess and declare that you are unmarried and free from all other marriage relations and engagements whatsoever? I do. And to you, Monica, do you confess and declare that you are unmarried and free from all other marriage relations and engagements whatsoever? I do. And to you again, Carl. She whose hand you hold is to be your wedded wife. Your character and conduct will greatly determine her happiness in life. She is giving you one of the most precious things under heaven, a woman's love. It will be the continued exercise of the love, care, and courtesy that you have shown her in courtship that will keep her one to your heart. Will you, in the presence of God and these witnesses, Take Monica Lynn Forey to be your wedded wife. Will you love and cherish her, provide and care for her in health and sickness, in prosperity and adversity? Will you exercise patience, kindness, and forbearance toward her, and live in peace as becomes a faithful husband? Will you forsake all others and keep yourself only unto her as long as you both shall live? I will. And to you, Monica, he whose hand you hold is to be your wedded husband. He is promising to you one of life's greatest joys, a man's loving leadership. By your continued respect and support, you will inspire him to continue pursuing and leading your heart. He will look to you for, in for encouragement, cheerfulness, and confidence. May your life be the inspiration and your love the protection that he needs as a Christian man in today's world. Will you, in the presence of God and these witnesses, take Carl and John Yoder to be your wedded husband? Will you love and cherish him, provide and care for him in health and sickness, in prosperity and adversity? Will you exercise patience, kindness, and forbearance toward him? and live in peace as becomes a faithful and submissive wife. Will you forsake all others and keep yourself only unto him as long as you both shall live? I will. Upon these vows that you have made before God and these witnesses, I now pronounce you man and wife. May the love of Christ which never fails bind you constantly to each other, and what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. May God be with you and bless your union abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord. This time, I'm going to invite the parents to come forward for a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, this indeed is a special day uh, for us as parents as well. It's been such a joy, Lord, to see Carl and Monica invest well in preparation, first of all, in their walk with you, and then in their relationship one with another, in demonstrating um, caring and getting to know each other in, in God's order, in God's way. And Lord Jesus, we know that even as, as we thank you, Lord, for the preparation that they've invested, and we know that you'll bless that, 
We know ultimately, Lord, that it's, it's only as they're joint heirs of your grace, of your power, that they can continue to, to face together all the uncertainties, even as Berlin was mentioning, of life that life might bring, and that they would just humbly have your, um, your grace and your wisdom for each of the turns in life that, that they would um, encounter decisions and things in the future that only you know about. So we just commit them into your hands. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your design of marriage and that you are pleased when two people are following your will to walk together through life. We thank you for leading Carl and Monica together and to each other. Thanks for giving them both salvation that they've accepted and for directing their lives this far. So as they are joined together by you, we pray that their relationship will be grounded in the truth of your word, that their marriage will be a witness to those around you of God's love, bringing you all the honor and glory that you deserve. We pray that you would grant them joy and contentment as they establish their new home, create a family, and explore the depths of their love for one another and for you. So in their decision-making, we pray that they would seek you first and trust that your way is the best way. Help them to communicate as a team when they have struggles, trials, and conflicts. Help them to have patience, understanding, forgiveness, and respect for each other and that their words will be filled with grace and compassion. We also ask that you would help Carl and Monica to encourage each other in their walk with you and to be a light to this dark world. Yes. We pray that their home would have much joy, laughter, support, and an atmosphere of acceptance and love. Yes. We pray that you would bless their home with children and help them to raise them to love and serve you. Also, bless their home with peace, and may their trust for you increase. Yes. We love them, Lord. Yes. Keep them safe, and may they be faithful to you as long as they live. It's in the name of Jesus that we lift them up to you and pray. Amen. 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 We both love singing. It's one of my first memories of Monica was coming to a church program and hearing her sing. We wanted to sing something for our wedding and we just could not find the right song. So I ended up writing one and I'm not really a songwriter in other ways, but we wanted something that was a little bit more than just a love song that actually pointed towards, towards what we want this to show other people about Christ. And the fact that our lives are for serving Christ and this marriage is part of that. That's what gives us confidence that it will succeed. So I hope you all enjoy it. It is not perfect. This day is finally here, our God has made it clear that his paths for us will always run together. And as I stand here with you, stepping into something new, I know God will change us for the better. 
May the world see Christ in us, in our love and in our trust. When we learn to care for each other more each day, we will learn love and respect, honor and protect, as we live out Christ's love as one. The mystery today is real. We can describe the joy we feel. This idea is from the Lord and it is good. But the challenges will be when the way we cannot see. Will we remember to love as we should? May the world see Christ in us, in our love and in our trust. When we learn to care for each other more each day, we will learn love and respect, honor and protect, as we live out Christ's love as one. Our goal is still the same, to lift up our Savior's name, to point others to Him till we die. But though hard at times it seems, if working as a team, together we can lift Him twice as high. May the world see Christ in us, in our love and in our trust, when we learn to care for each other more each day. We will learn love and respect, honor and protect, as we live out Christ's love as one. We will learn love and respect, honor and protect, as we live out Christ's love as one. It was beautiful, nicely done. I'm grateful for your testimony. And what we've witnessed today is yet another thing illustrating God's part and man's part. What we saw is two people making commitments, making vows to each other. And what God does is miraculously joins them as one till death do us part. And so friends and family, it is my honor to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Carl Yoder. that later. <laughs> I guess we're excited about it. <laughs> okay, I think talk yet. Thanks everyone for watching. We're sorry y'all couldn't be here, but we feel the support. And a lot of people have messaged us and said they're sorry that we couldn't have the wedding that we really wanted or dreamed of, and we appreciate that, but Honestly, we're not disappointed. Like, we feel like this is the day that God wanted it to be, and it was special. So thank you so much. We're going to be living at close around here, 3427 Highway 39 West, Athens, Tennessee, 37303. If you all want to drop by once the virus is gone or send something or whatever, that's the address. And we're hoping to have a reception sometime later, we just don't know quite yet. So thank you for joining us.
thank you all for coming. This has been a very special occasion, though it was not exactly as planned. It is beautiful. It is a wedding. We have a new marriage. And for that, we're grateful. For those of you listening on the live stream, or if you're local, it is different for Carl and Monica having to change their wedding date. Normally, a celebration like this would include uh, lots of friends and family being around and lots of gifts. And rather than that being the case, when we're done here, we're going to go home after a little bit. And there won't be a lot of fanfare. And that hardly seems quite right, so we'll delay that part. But there is something you can do. Carl and Monica are going to take a short wedding trip. And they will be arriving back at their home later this coming week. And so for those of you locally, we invite you to drop off any gifts at Monica's parents' place, at Tony Forey's house. Those of you from a distance, if you would care to send them a gift, it would assist them in setting up housekeeping. And that could be mailed to 506 County Road 655, Athens, Tennessee, 37303. So thank you to all for coming. God bless those of you family, uh, close family members that are here and just a few friends. This is a special day. Thank you to everybody who's watching on the live, live stream. Your support and your friendship is much appreciated. Let's all stand and close with a word of prayer. Our loving Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We are grateful to you for your goodness and love and the many gifts that you give us. And at this moment, we're grateful for marriage and the new one that has just begun. We lift Carl and Monica to you and ask them that you would bless them exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. You're dismissed.